and welcome to the Ducoscopy Week Ahead interview. Joining me to discuss which political and economical events may shape the markets on the trading week beginning March 11th is David Keeble from Credit Agricole. Now David, last week was a bit of a mixed bag considering we had US unemployment rates fall to a four-year low, a positive beige book report alongside ECB expectations of Eurozone economic growth to stabilise in the first half of 2013. But on the other hand, data from France and Germany disappointed. But how would you describe market sentiment heading into the trading week in reaction to these goings on? Yeah, as you point, there's a, a strong dichotomy at the moment between the US, which is doing well in Europe, which is really so-so. Um, what we're finding, I think, when we talk to clients is that uh, really investors are very reluctant to assign much weight to what's going on in the US economy because we've had a, a, a boost to growth and it's proven to be temporary so many times. Uh, so there's not a, a full-on uh, acceptance that these U.S. economic data have been uh, good or good enough. Uh, and in Europe, of course, we're in this sort of uh, no-man's land between generally better and more upbeat uh, survey data and still extremely poor real economic data. So, you know, at the moment the market just seems to want to trade sideways in the debt markets and uh, put on a little bit of risk into, into the equity side. The economic data flow is dominated by updates on industrial production in the US, UK, India, Japan and the Eurozone. The global PMI data has generally been positive in January and February, though that's mainly led by the US. Are there any particular releases you would suggest our reviewers should keep an eye out for, or are political events having more impact on investors being risk on or risk off these days? Yeah, I think it's um, US retail sales that we have out on Wednesday I'd uh, highlight, uh, simply because the US retailer or household sector has really been dominated by uh, you know, the tax hikes at the start of the year and then more recently the uh, ascent of uh, gasoline prices. Uh, and so we want to see how he sort of copes with this. We've got the positive side of things, that there are more employed Americans these days. Um, but you know, it, it's the U.S. household sector which is crucial to keeping, I think, the, uh, the recovery going, uh, given its importance in the world. U.S. stocks did, however, fall after the Dow Jones Industrial Average reached its highest level ever, as a report showed industrial production in China expanded at the slowest pace since 2009. Do you consider this a bit of a setback for the global economy? Uh, I'm not too worried by the softness in Chinese industrial production, because increasingly, I think we need to look on the, you know, the service sector side rather than on the export side for uh, the performance and uh, that, that's the thing that's starting to accelerate now. So for me, the, uh, that, that, that particular data, I, I would downplay. I don't think it influences uh, you know, the global pickup uh, that we're sort of starting to see. So you know, I, I do think at the moment uh, I, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care that much. Italian bonds have trailed behind their Spanish counterparts since the nation's parliamentary stalemate, which seems to be threatening outgoing Prime Minister Mario Monti's reforms, which have helped calm the Europe debt crisis. Perhaps adding more fuel to the fire has been Fitch's downgrade of the Italian economy. However, some analysts believe investors are paying less attention to the views of ratings companies and relying more on their own analysis. Would you agree with this? I think at the moment what we're finding is that uh, we're not getting the same big swings in risk sentiment in part because of uh, what we've heard from central bankers like Draghi saying doing whatever it takes. But more importantly, uh, Italian and Spanish debt are in stronger hands these days. They're mostly in domestic hands. And uh, these guys don't get so excited, and they are fully aware of the credit of their local uh, country. Uh, and, and so for these reasons, yes, you're quite right. The, uh, the impact of Fitch and uh, others is much more minimized because of the, uh, the way that the investor base has changed. In FX, the US dollar remains firm and US Treasury yields are gradually edging higher, although not breaking last year's high of 2.40%. Some believe it's still quite difficult to get bullish about the euro, with Italian political uncertainties lurking and Spain still in trouble. But what is your outlook on the euro dollar moving forward? Yeah, we're not bullish on the, uh, the euro. I think at the moment we're starting to move away from what we've, uh, how we've traded the euro over the last uh, two or three years, which was you know, risk on, risk off. Um, to some degree, uh, and the dollar's caught up in that. And we're going back to a more traditional approach where by the relative interest rate differential is important, the relative growth is important. And I think for this reason, you know, the dollar wins. Um, you know, it's, it's not particularly strong growth, but it's certainly far better than we're getting in Europe. So we're seeing the, a small drop uh, coming through uh, down to about 125 by the end of the year. 
David, thank you very much for your insights. Well, that's all from David and myself, but the TV team will be covering all these big events and much more throughout the week, so please do keep clicking back. Bye for now.